my fellow thrifters it is margaret welcome to our channel texas gal treasures in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you things that i don't leave behind when i am at estate sales or thrift stores so today i'm taking you along to some estate sales and a thrift store where i pick up some things i'm going to show you what i picked up what i'm going to be able to flip it for and what you need to be looking out for when you are out thrifting and garage sailing let's get started If you are new here, I'd like to welcome you to our channel. My name is Margaret, my partner Juan and I go out thrifting, garage sailing, and we flip things on eBay, Etsy, as many platforms as we can, both online and locally. So if you're interested in learning how to make a full-time income reselling, whether online or locally, then definitely you need to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified when we put out new videos or when we go live sometimes to talk about our thrifting and garage selling and reselling. So this particular Saturday, we ended up hitting up an estate sale, which was really kind of pricey, but we did find a couple things that we were able to bring home for a profit. This was one of those estate sales that I think they probably take things from one estate sale and shift it to the next if it doesn't sell. But I did find a little tub in the garage of glasses and this is one area that I know I can find uh, things to sell in that is one tip I will say for some of these estate sales especially these bigger estate sale companies usually the stuff that's going to be most affordable they just shove it out in the garage and then they stage all of their other items that they're selling for higher profits inside the house so definitely hit up the garage if you're on a budget when you're uh, estate selling but vintage glasses and just glasses frames in general can do really, really well. I wanted to talk about these drop arm glasses because these just sold for me for $41.99. It's the kind like 80s style that they drop down on the side. Uh, I, th I think of like a nine to five Jane Fonda, like that's that style. Uh, but, but you can also find other vintage glasses. I kind of to, I plugged in bifocals and I plugged in the drop arms to show you guys some different examples of the different kinds of glasses. If you get them for a really good price, they can sell for 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks and on up depending on the brand. The drop arms ones that I sold, they didn't even have a brand on them. So they don't necessarily have to have a fancy brand like these Dior ones here on the right, you know, it helped I'm sure, but they didn't even sell for more than my no name brand ones. Here's another pair. Uh, these again are Christian Dior that sold their vintage. They sold for $64. So that style, I mean, I, I, it's hard for me to describe it another way. If you think of an, a better way to describe it, drop a comment down there in the comment section. But I always think of Jane Fonda in 9 to 5. I think too because my mom wore glasses like that. So uh, that always reminded me of, of her or reminds me of her, I guess I should say. But here you can see these 80s, 70s style drop arm, drop arm eyeglasses. You know, these sold for 55 bucks. If you see the side of the glasses, it's got that drop to them. The I'm sure the ombre, the ombre lenses don't hurt as well because those are pretty cool. So here you go, another pair sold for $43. So when you're out thrifting, garage selling, keep an eye on that because usually you can get old glasses frames for a pretty good uh, pickup. Boy, my camera work here is phenomenal. But this is my, my favorite part to hit, especially with these uh, estate sales that just it, it feels like they take stuff from one estate sale that doesn't sell like the high-end stuff and they pack it up and they take it to the next one all right camera work is a little bit shaky here but I'm looking here in the books and one area that frequently sells for a pretty good profit are Bibles I generally have to look them up every time and I do flip through them because a lot of times people stick stuff in Bible so you just kind of like to see you know their old photographs in there money sometimes are just stuck in Bibles now if you see a Bible that's got the you know very fancy embellished locking on it that you're probably gonna think okay I'm gonna look this up but see like this one like if you saw this Bible you'd be like I think I need to check this one out but just regular looking Bibles can sell as well. And I've done pretty well over the years selling Bibles. So these are a couple that I've sold. New Testament, this one sold for $87.99. Oxford, self-pronouncing, etc., etc. I can't remember the rest of the title. And here are some other ones that sold over. Um, these actually sold on eBay, but my eBay listings rolled off. So I have them, the links or the pictures there for the Etsy ones. And then this is a Holy Bible, Ancient Eastern Manuscripts, 
now if you take a look it looks just like a regular kind of bible academic sort of looking book but the price that this one is selling for over and over again is right around that 125 dollar mark so definitely keep an eye out for this ancient eastern manuscripts so that uh if you see it it'll ring a bell in the back of your head and say grab it grab it grab it uh, because it can sell for a really good profit see here's what i'm talking about with these estate sales they they like have all this jewelry that clearly is not from this one particular house you know so they have brought it from other estates and they just pile it all in and bring it to the next one same thing here with the quilts so the quilts quilts homemade quilts i will say homemade quilts can sell for a really good profit i would say check because sometimes there are some that are made um manufactured that look like they're, they're really good replicas of of homemade quilts handmade quilts but if they have a tag you know clearly you know like a store brand tag not a handmade by mom kind of tag but check out those prices 160 bucks 80 bucks the prices were out of control on these quilts and again unless you're a quilter you're probably not going to have that many quilts in your house generally um, if you're my mom then yeah you might but here you can see quite a number of quilts i'm going to show you that have sold for a really good profit 33 dollars on this smaller one this one sold for 255 dollars I sold one that I got at Savers. I got it at Savers for $15. It had this beautiful embroidered eagle on it. It was handmade and uh, sold it to a viewer for, I believe it was $125 when I showed it in my haul video. So here you can see, you know, full size, queen size. A lot of times the piecing, which is like how the pieces are put together can affect the value, the colors. Uh, people like this little, the one with the little patchwork ones. I particularly like those a lot. But these wedding, uh, wedding rings can do really well if you see ones that look like that. So keep an eye out for handmade quilts. Uh, the next thing I like to look for, again, 16 bucks on this, is Native American and Native American style pottery. Uh, because I, I'm not an expert on distinguishing between if it's real or if it's um, a replica. But either way, it can sell. And I, I'm going to link a, an article down below so that if you want to dive a little bit deeper into the different styles of Native American pottery, you can. But a lot of people, you know, some people want the authentic stuff, but some people are just decorating their house and they want to have that Southwest style or Native American style. So just you would have to be a little more careful with your title when it comes to that because you can't say it is a definitive Native American pottery. These are called wedding vases, Native American um, wedding vases. Do they even put it in there? Wedding vase, yeah. And they've got the two spouts, and those can do really well. I think I've talked about those once before. But here you see different styles, different colorings. I'm, it just depends on the person's personal preference. This is the article I'm going to link for you all so that you can kind of read up on the different styles and what kind of things are desirable and even how to distinguish real from uh, replicas. This was a pretty cool vase as well. Tell me what you think of that. It's got that Art Nouveau kind of look to it. We're about to jump here from the estate sale and go over to a Goodwill. It's going to be abrupt. Three, two, one, go. Ha ha! Magically, we have transported to Goodwill. I wanted to talk about these bowls. These are West Elm bowls, and that company makes some really high-end uh, housewares. So they don't just sell dishes and kitchen stuff, but if you see something marked West Elm, definitely take the time to look it up. It's kind of like that Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel brand. Uh, th this is a fun butter dish by uh, West Elm that sold. Actually, we got a couch not too long ago from one of our free sites, and one of my kids ended up you know, depilling it and cleaning it and flipping it for two, two, is it 200 or 300, 300 bucks uh, locally. So the furniture, the, the, these are some sheets that can sell 88 bucks, 99 bucks. If you see the, the brand West Elm, take the time to look up the item, whether it's bedding, whether it's dishes, or they, they even have lighting. I mean, it's just a whole, all around housewares type of store. Uh, and like I said, my, my kiddo just flipped a couch that we got for free off, I think it was Craigslist uh, that we got that from. Next up is Opal House, which is a Target brand, which initially I would think, mm, it's Target, mm, pass. But I'm not right about that. <laughs> so I looked up these because I thought these are really cute, these little waffle hearts. This is two of those cups with the waffle strawberries that sold for $24. 
And so I decided to look up some of the other Opal House melamine. These are the melamine plates and bowls. And those are selling for a really good profit. There's some other melamine fruit print plates that sold for $40. If you're getting them for a good price, and a lot of times my Goodwill will put things as a set and sell them that way, uh, then it can be really worth your while. It cuts down on the overhead. And I did look up some other Opal House stuff. I guess I didn't link it here, but, but it, it's worth, again, checking out. I'm trying to get down to this platter that you can see underneath. It's got this kind of mosaic painted look to it with fish on it. I'm checking out these other little melamine plates, but I decided to pass on those. So I thought this was a really cool platter, but when I ended up looking it up, it was only selling for like $15, or the solds were showing about $15. And I think that's about what they wanted. They, they were really high on their prices today. I think they wanted 8 or $10 on it. So I was trying to do a little more research. I, I like when I get into the thrift stores, especially at thrift stores, more so than garage sales. I, I try to find an area where I can kind of dig in and look up a couple new things to me to see. Because even if I don't learn that, that something is worth a lot of money, I can learn that it's not worth a lot of money. you know. Or doing that kind of dive, I might see something similar that is. you know. So just constantly trying to find new things to pick up all the time. Now this looks like a Kurok, and I'm probably butchering that. It's um, a, a di oh, I can't get my words out, like a platter, a tray. But this one wasn't marked, and they're usually marked, so I wasn't sure if it was like a knockoff one. But this Kurok tray, uh, they make trays, they make plates, bowls, they can sell for a pretty good profit. They're not like super fast sellers, but if you get it for cheap enough, you know, you're looking at 35, 50, 60 bucks, depending on the pattern. Again, this is what the, when you flip it over, you should see like a sticker like that, or it's all say Kurok, and no wonder I misspelled it. That's probably why I couldn't find as many. Um, I misspelled it in my search, go me. Uh, that helps to spell things right. Okay, we're jumping right into the next item, and this is the Kurt, Kurt S. Adler ornaments. This is the tacos, and again, get ready for me to butcher a word. But I was looking to see, well, what of the, which one of these Kurt S. Adler ornaments are selling? Because I'm looking, I see some are worth more, some are not worth quite as much. And at first I start thinking, okay, what's the glass ones? The wooden ones aren't selling for quite as much. And then I realized that the glass ones are, are a special, there's a special process to make them. And here we go. It's called, I even put, it's called Polonaise. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. But it's sort of like this blown glass and then painted. Here you see the Santa one, that's 30 bucks. So what I ended up doing was, yeah, those Kurt S. Adler Polonaise, <laughs> Dijonaise, I feel like I wanna say, um, ornaments are selling for a good profit. So I was looking up other ornaments from different brands with that same style. And again, those can also sell for a really good profit. So, oh, I thought I pulled some other ones up, but I guess I forgot to drop them in here. But yeah, keep an eye out for those Polonaise ornaments that look like kind of blown glass or hollow kind of glass ornaments, real thin and lightweight. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I want y'all to go down there leave me a comment. I shared with you some of the things I like to pick up. Let me know something that you like to pick up as well, and I'll see you on the next one.